Okay, I don't have any of the um, fancy gem. Like, I know there's a little tacky thing that grabs the gems for you, so I'm just going to be very clumsy here. But I think I am going to, because this clay is not soft at all. And I really want to make sure that it has somewhere to sit. So I'm going to kind of create a, hmm, I'm just wondering if there's a better tool that I could use but this is just a stylus and I'm gonna create a little hole in the clay for the gem to sit and I'm gonna grab the medium size just with my fingers and position it over that hole and push it in just with my fingers I'm not using any I think I'll try using the stylus but it's round but I think I got that in there I really don't want to lose the shape because everything's looking so good. But look at that. Oh man, I love it. I'm going to put... Um, see, it did distort. But the clay should grab onto that when I um, bake it. There are tiny ones, so I'm grabbing a tiny one. And I think I want to embed this into this little... Um, ball that I made. It's very hard. I need a, I kind of need a flat, something flat, like the, I'm going to use the end of this brush. It's still not flat. Hmm. Am I in the shot? There we go. I just got it to go underneath the clay a bit. So I like that, and then I think I want to do another one up here. And I'm going to use this and just indent it. I'm going to put a small one again, which actually I think I'm going to do a medium because uh, that hole was big enough for a medium. I'm just fitting it into the hole with my fingernail which it's not really embedding. This clay is quite stiff, I'll tell you. And if they fall out after baking, you just glue them back in. But I love that. I need to sit everything back down flat. I'm going to put a couple more um, pieces of uh, just clay, little balls of clay back here for texture. So this is, see I would like to make them round because if they're not round they don't uh, turn out circular, they turn out wonky. So I'm going to put a couple, they're kind of just like little warts. Just little warts that are going to add texture. And then I'll come back when it, after it's baked and we will um, I'm going to put one more little um, ball of clay without a I'm going to make a hole but I'm not going to put a um, a spike in it like it's still going to sprout it hasn't sprouted yet I think I'm going to use the smaller one So that one's going to sprout. I like it. I'm going to add a couple more things. So I'll bake it and I'll be back to show you the next step. Okay, before I bake it, I just wanted to come back and tell you, I noticed that the eyelid got a little squished. So I'm just taking my straight edge of my X-Acto blade and I'm pushing it up. Just make sure everything's how you want it before you bake because, you know, now's your last chance. So. If you want to straighten anything out, add any more texture lines. Um, let's see. I think I want to put that down on the surface. I just want to make sure that it's all flat, so I'm pushing it down. on. I'll bake it right on this um, tile. So I'm just pushing it down to the surface. I think all my texture is showing up pretty well. 
and I'm going to go pop that in the oven now. But I just wanted to say, you know, because I do see where I've kind of squished some of the texture away here. So I'm just going to bring it back and definitely tweak it a little bit because it looks, this is super cute, right? All right, now I love it. And I'll be back. Okay, it's all baked. And I like it. I think the gems got in there. The clay grabbed them pretty well. It's fairly flat. It's not, you know, perfect. But I love the eye. I think the eye itself is very pretty. All right, this is the next thing we have to do. We're going to take, and I'm going to use... This is fuchsia, but it, it's kind of coming off as purple. Like, this is purple, actually. No, it's definitely fuchsia. Um, I was wondering, I think I might want to use uh, chocolate cherry. Now, I have a lot of different colors of paint. This is called chocolate cherry, and it's basically a reddish brown. I could use mendicino. Nope. I think I'm going to use the chocolate cherry. I think it'll look pretty and a little bit of water and just we're going to paint this. I'm going to try not to get it all over me which yeah, what are the odds of that? Because I don't have any gloves left. Uh, I just have a little cup of water here and mix a little bit of water into it and hope for the best. I'm going to try not to get my hand all in it but we'll see. And you basically want to cover the whole thing. I think black would have looked nice too. You know what? We'll do it one side at a time. Why not? And then I don't have to get my hand all grubby. And I'm just going to leave it on. I'm using a regular paper towel. This has a little dampness to it. But it's not totally wet. And just pull the paint off. And see what we get. It should stay in the nooks and crannies. And then we're going to bring up the details with some um, rub and buff. I think I'm going to use rub and buff. Oh, I think I might use Inca Gold. So now I'm going to do the other side. Just want to get it into all those little crevices that we made to make it look like it has a lizardy texture skin. And it'll come off all your gems and stuff. It'll and the and the glass eye. We can definitely work on that getting it out of those. But see, you can already see. Then, if it didn't get it off, as much as you'd like, you can get a baby wipe. I'm just going to fold this into a little edge that I can kind of run between the spikes. I didn't do it very good, did I? I need a stiffer part. There we go. See? Good. I'm going to grab a baby wipe, mostly for my hands. Get it off the back. I think I'm going to put um, a bale on here. Now I'm just wiping it off the main areas and the bling. 
I like it. I think that chocolate cherry just, did I say chocolate cherry? I don't even know now. Yeah, chocolate cherry. Gave it just enough detail. I'm going to take the, I have, I think I am going to use this. This is called Rose Quartz. But we could use silver, gold, any color, purple. I do have purple, but I think I want to see what this looks like on it. And very gently, light touch, I have a tiny bit. I mean, it's not thick is what I mean. I want to touch the edges. So the eyelids. and pick up some of that texture that we added. I don't want to cover all the fuchsia because I think that's a beautiful color, but we want to add some brightness and shimmer. I'm not really in the shot, am I? Because I'm watching what I'm doing. That's what happens. Let's try and get these spikes. Wow, it came to life, right? I think I'm just going to leave the back. I'm going to put a bail on it and I'm going to turn it into a pendant. I'm going to go over the um, gems and the eye with a, um, see it's getting a little uh, cl clumpy, like it's, I should probably give it a squirt with water or wet my finger, but let's see, I think that did the trick. I'm going to buff it now, I'm going to kind of take this yucky old towel. I'm just kind of rub, try to be gentle. It's not in my nature, but what's cool is it, it's not, it doesn't overwhelm it. It doesn't take away from the, the fuchsia clay, but it, it accents it. So it only shows when you have it at a certain angle. Those um, crystals are gorge. And I only buy them because they're on clearance. But um, I'm glad I have them. Like, I love using them. I usually get stuff like that on clearance because Swarovski is a pretty expensive uh, crystal. And then I think I want to add just. Yeah, I wet my finger and make it more slippery. A little on the inside eyelid and right here I don't feel like it's on that area. I mean you could go crazy right? But I think the effect is, I think we got the effect we want. Don't you guys? It's so cute. Oh my God, it's so cute. Um, the last thing I like to do is I take some, um, glossy accents. Wait, let me just clean everything off real quick. The gems. Hopefully this will I have a pin somewhere on my desk. I just did another one. I'll show you. While, while that was baking, I made another one. But I have to... Uh, ooh, a little too much. just going to take that same old pointy brush I've had and put a little bit of this in these eye ducts or the tear ducts, right? 
I kind of put it thick and make them look wet. You can put it on the lid itself, on the inside of the lid, but I think that'll be good. And then you can put some on any of the flat surfaces. I didn't make that many flat surfaces on this one. They're all pretty much holes. There's a flat one. And there's a flat one. And that's pretty much it. Aw, uh, it's adorable. Then I think I'm going to take one of uh, these little things. I actually have some ring uh, metal findings and I have these are little bales and I've had these in my stash for a long time. I'm going to adhere this with E6000 probably and I think I'm going to go right even with the, eye, the pupil so that it hangs straight like that and that would be a little pendant cute right I love the eye it turned out well and then this is the one I made while that was baking and then I baked this. This is that mini uh, Altoid box, Altoid tin. And I embedded some of the gems in here as well. I did it in the red. And I just did it similarly, but I want to see, I think I want to antique this. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to use the chocolate cherry on this one too. I know this is getting long, but basically that's it. That's the tutorial, um, and you're welcome to go try and make one yourself now. Not go try, but go have fun making one. Um, I'm going to put a little more paint, but I just figured I'd do this on camera too, and hope for the best, right? And then I'll fill this with paper. I'll put some paper inside. But let's put some paint. I want to get it in all these nooks and crannies so that hopefully the eye will become more defined. The shape of the eye, I should say, because, because it's a, a bigger surface, I hope the eye shape doesn't get lost because it's all monotone. You know, I didn't use any other colors. I think it should work. I think it should be fine. Try to keep my fingers out of it, but it's almost impossible for me to stay clean. But you want to make sure you get it in all the nooks and crannies. That's all. All right. I'll do one side first. I'm just going to use a paper towel. And this is, this is a little damp because I think I used it when I washed my hands, so I dried my hands. Just go around the edges. I don't want to pull off my spikes, so I try to be gentle. I'm chewing gum too. I put a piece of gum in, sorry. I like to pop my gum. I know people don't like that. It's a pet peeve when someone's popping their gum. I think it's going to work. I think I'm going to be able to see the definition of this little dragon's eye. I used the um, the Macon's uh, texture sheet to do the texture on here. I added a little bit with the etch and pearl too. Put a couple gems here. One of them really got sunken in into the actual eyeball 
and the other ones are in balls of clay. I just rolled out a ball of clay and then I um, pushed the gem down into the ball of clay and it like comes up around it and surrounds it. It's pretty cool. I'll show you. So you know what? Those spikes are holding on pretty well. And all you do is just roll that clay up into a little um, log, like a thin log, and then squish it down in there and then the the clay kind of grabs onto it. So what do you think? Can you see that? The definition? It's not too... I think I want to get under there more. You know what we'll do? We'll take the edge of my bleed and run it along. I like it. I think it worked. And then when we add the, uh, I think I'll use the pink again. Or should we use gold? I think I'm going to use gold. I have gold rub and buff out here somewhere. Right here. just want to take off a little bit. You know, but when we put this on, it'll 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 go right over the paint. I don't want it to be so dark. I want that red to be the star because that red is a pretty color. So this takes a little fudging with. Well worth it though. I don't want the corners to be too dark in there. I think we're getting there. I think it definitely has the definition I was hoping for. I mean, you can tell the shape of the eye, right? All right, let me try some of this gold. It's a similar product, but it's just in the tube. And you don't want too much. A little bit goes a long way. And I'm going to start right on the eyelids again. Hitting the eyelids. Trying to touch the areas that give it definition. Right along that edge. I need a little more. You can you can buff this off, uh, so I'm gonna I'll just see what it does, and then I'll try and take it off if I want to, because it definitely adds uh, definition. Like you can see all the little details. Adding patina is kind of new to me. I like raw clay. I think the colors they make the clay are beautiful so why do we cover them up you know and uh, it was it was interesting for me to when I first tried using patina by that I mean covering all this pretty clay with the paint and then buffing it off you know and it leaves that antique look which isn't you know for everyone everyone's not a uh, fan of that but it is when it's a um, a critter like this with that has all this dimension and detail so let me get another q-tip this eye turned out pretty too I used the blue green in there but I want to get the gems because it I got the rub and buff on the gems there we go Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's not one. Here's one. So there's one, two, three gems there and one there. And then I put two on top of the eye. And one really sank down into the clay. Can't really see it. I'll take this towel. 
don't want to buff off my spikes. So I gotta try and be a little gentle. Which is not in my nature. What do you think? You think that's good enough? I think it gives the effect of it's like his body. This is his face, you know, sort of, kind of. I'm going to try and put a little bit on a, a Q-tip and then put it underneath here, which it's overkill. I am, I'm an overkiller. I'm trying to get it up, see, because now it's totally too much. Hey, you know what, guys? Live and learn. Watch me and you'll learn what not to do. That's for sure. Now I'm going to need to put black paint under there. Or, I mean, not the black paint, but the, um, you know what I have is a little bit of, uh, this is just hand sanitizer. I'm just going to put that on here and try to remove some of that. Bingo. But the, the paint didn't, um, I think I covered it up. It's all right. I'm getting carried away. All right. And then the last thing I would do, again, is the, uh, got to give it the wet look in the corners of the eyes. And anywhere else you want to put it. I like to put it on some of the flat ones. That's what um, Chris Capono did. And I like it. I think it adds a lot of texture. And then I got some on the eyeball. Alright, so here they are. I hope you give it a try. It's fun. Alright you guys, thanks for watching.